Oh, I'm grateful to be in. I'm grateful to be in the goodness of God today. Anyone else feel that way? My goodness. Um, could have worshipped, worshipped on with the worship team, didn't they? Do incredible today and leading us in and, and helping us to be in the presence of God. I'm so glad to be with you, and I'm so glad you're here, all our guests. It's just so wonderful to have you in, in church with us today and, and this holiday week and many people traveling. And I'm just grateful to be in God's presence and with you and, and to worship. Amen. Would you just lift a hand and thank him again? Thank you, Jesus. I love you, God, and thank you. Thank you for your love, Lord, in Jesus' name. The book of 1 Kings, the 18th chapter. Now, um, this is uh, a message today that, that I, have, I have wove together the entire week. Amen. Part of it while in the dark. And, uh, and so, um, I believe we will get to where we need to be if you'll walk with me in the Word for the next few moments. And understand some things. I feel very, very broken today. I'm thankful for God's goodness. Amen. Amen. And it came to pass in verse 1 of the 18th chapter of the book of 1 Kings. 1 Kings. Chapter 18. Verse 1. And it came to pass after many days. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year saying, go show thyself unto Ahab and I will send rain upon the earth. Now this is in contrast to what God had spoke to him three years prior. That there would be no rain. And he set him by a brook and there the ravens fed him. And there he was sustained. And so now, after all those dry days, after all that famine, after all that drought, after all that silence, this is what happened after many days. And so let me talk to you for a moment. Please walk with me in the word after many days. Amen. Father, I love you and thank you <clears throat> for your great goodness and mercy. I thank you, Lord, that your presence in the, is in this house. Thank you, God, that you are good to us and that you are kind and compassionate. And you see us, Lord, when we are yet a great way off and you are patient with us, Lord, and your love, Lord, extends beyond what is reasonable. To me at times, I'm thankful, Lord, that it is unreasonable. And Lord, I pray that you would help us today just to rest in your word and to rest in your promises and what we've already heard and what we've already felt and, and to know, God, that you hear us and that you know us. You've seen us long before we ever arrived at this place today. So God, I thank you that you have known us, you know us, and you shall know us, and you shall keep us, because you change not. You said, Lord, for us to learn to be content because uh, you're never leaving us nor forsaking us. So God, I pray that you would help us all to understand this, and that you would be glorified. Anoint me and anoint this people, and thank you, God, so much for your anointed word. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Would you just tell the Lord you love him right now? In Jesus' name, I love you, Jesus. <clears throat> Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. I want to be holy, holy like you. I want to be holy, holy like you. Holy Spirit, purify me. Cleanse and make me new. I want to be holy, holy like you. Sing it with me. I want to be holy, holy like you. I want to be holy, holy like you. Holy Spirit, purify me. Cleanse and make me new. I want to be holy. Holy like you, I want to be holy, holy like you, I 
want to be holy, holy like you. Holy Spirit, purify me, cleanse and make me new. I want to be holy, holy like you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. amen. You may be seated in Jesus' name. <clears throat> the book of Ecclesiastes offered a glimpse into the nature and, <clears throat> and the way of God that is often so misunderstood by the impetuous, impatient nature and manner of mankind. It's a way, it's a way of God that often that's often difficult to define, and, and it's even more difficult for us to accept at times. Uh, no matter how keen our spiritual vision might be, uh, it's too often clouded by our carnality and by our consuming sense of self and the seasons of life that we often find ourselves in. But it's nonetheless His way. It's the way of God. It's His way, and, and God's way is always perfect. This is what it says. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Will you allow me to take my time for a few minutes here today? Just bear with me. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Though a sinner, though a sinner do, an, do evil a, a hundred times and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know, yet surely I know that it, that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before God. It's hard to see, but it's there. That even in the slow sentence of God that is not executed speedily, though the judgment of God, in other words, the judgment of God upon sin, upon wrong, upon evil, is not executed speedily. In the days and, and nights and, and months and maybe even years that we have to wait, in other words, is what it's saying. That we have to wait to have and to hold the answer to the hope that God has given us. We often sit in silence. We see others, uh, we see others get their prayers answered, that they're praying and the provision given. And all the while we wait and we wonder, we wonder, when will it be us? When will it be me? We wonder why the wicked get their way. We, we try to live right. We try to live right, do the right thing, pray the prayer, and be faithful to it. And yet still the truth is, we wait. And we wonder. And we wonder why. Why have I not heard from God? The sons of men set their heart to do evil. The judgment of God is held back by the mercy of God. You have to look at this verse more deeply, these verses here. You have to look, you have to look between the lines of what's being said. The, the sons of men set their heart to do evil. The judgment of God is held back by the mercy of God, and we struggle with his holy way. We struggle with his perfect way. We struggle because we want the execution of the sentence of God to be done more quickly. We want it to be acted on more speedily. But the wise man said, though a sinner do evil a hundred times, a hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know this, that it shall be well with them that fear God. Did you see it? It's right there. A nature of God revealed. Yet I know that it shall be well with them that fear God. Uh, it's difficult to see, to accept, to know that though it seems that the answer will never come, that though it feels that the night will never end, ultimately, ultimately, it shall be well with them that fear God. Even 
in the silence of our waiting, God's promise and purpose is at work in our faithfulness to him. It shall be well. I know. I know it shall be well. I am assured. I am promised. I have hope. It shall be well with them that fear God. Even in the silence of my life, in in, in my waiting for the promise and the provision, the purpose, that is when God is at work in our faithfulness to him. You are not forgotten. Someone hear me today, please. You are not forgotten. You are not absent from the mind of, and the heart of God. Your life and his will being done, it's not lost from sight while others are, are, are seeming to be answered more, more quickly. It may seem like that the wicked get their way, but you have to remember that the Colossians, the third chapter and the third verse said that, that your life is hid with Christ in God. We are hid in God. In in the words of Abigail to David, um, your soul is bound in in the bundle of life. You are hid. You are covered. You are surrounded by the good of God. Even when you don't see it, when you don't know it, when you cannot feel it, when it cannot be expressed, you are in the good grace of God. Hmm. Even when the wicked get their way, even when it feels like that that somehow they're blessed or it feels like that somebody's a prayer across the aisle that you think don't deserve it's getting answered and, and you think yours should be. You're still, when you live for God, you're, in, you're bound up in that bundle of life. You're hid in Christ. You are covered by something that is much greater than the temporal fashions of this world. And it came to pass, and it came to pass, and it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah. After many days... How often have we found our lives caught in the tension of the waiting? I am preaching to the man in the pulpit today. If nobody else in the pew feels like it's for them, then I'm going to just preach to me for a minute here, okay? Um, After many days, how often have we found our lives caught in the tension of the waiting? The time from then to then, from here to there, from what we heard to the answer that would be given. Knowing that we heard from God, knowing that we heard from God, knowing that we felt God, knowing that there was the word spoken, standing and staying still in the promise that he had given to us at that point. Three years Elijah had lived by that brook that God had placed him by. Dry days filled with silence. That was where he was living on what God had told him. Do you understand this? There is no record in the word that God ever spoke to him from the time that he pronounced the sentence against Ahab and the rebellion of the people to the point that he heard from God to go and say there's going to be rain. It was silence. He put him by that brook. Dry days, difficult days, one lined against the other. No doubt there were days of doubt, wondering if he got it wrong. No doubt Elijah, I I can imagine he was, the word tells us in the word later on that he was a man of like passions. Uh, He was just like you and I in other words. Go all the way to the end of, towards the end of the book and you'll find that he was a man with like passion. So I know he had to feel like you feel, like I feel, wondering if he got it wrong, if he should have chose a different path and said no when God was asking him to say yes. It would have been different. All those days alone, nothing but birds surrounding him and some carcass of some meat from somewhere being fed to him and, a, and maybe a, a small trickle of a stream to make sure that he lived on the water. And wondering if he should have ran from that brook and found a different place to dwell, greener, greener grass, less stress, and more peace. But that was not what God told him to do, if you would please. God's provision is often revealed through our obedience to his word and his will. It's there. It's, it's there. Everybody hear me right now. It is there by the brooks of our life where God places us to be sustained that we must be able to answer the question and can God trust me in and with the waiting? Now listen, I hope you hear the entirety of this message. I hope you hear everything that, that I feel like the Lord once said today. But if you don't hear the rest of this message, I hope you hear what I'm getting ready to say right now. Can God trust me in and with the waiting? Can he trust us to remain faithful and trust him with the known and the unknowns of our life? Can he trust me with it? Can he trust me in the silence? Can he trust me when there is no word? When there's nobody giving me the approval, when there's nobody that's, that's in favor of me, when there's no one there telling me it's going to be okay? Can he trust me in the waiting? For the truth is, we either, I need you to hear this. Everybody tune in right now, please. For we either, 
The truth is we either serve God in a relationship built on rules or we serve him in a relationship built on trust. Rules are often responded to only for reward or out of fear. While trust, while trust is an outflow of love, a response to our relationship with him that rests in the faith that he loves us perfectly, thereby promising and providing the very best for us. Can he trust me in the relationship that is not built on rules? But Lonnie Helms, can he trust me in the relationship that is built on trust? That I trust him. That I do this. Brother Trace, I do this because I love him. I don't do this out of fear of retribution from God. I don't. Everybody hear this right now, please. Every Pentecostal that has been raised in a pew, everybody hear this. Uh, that somebody that's, that's so seasoned in this that, that you have had these thoughts in your mind. Do you serve God out of rules or do you serve him out of a relationship of trust? Because if you serve him out of rules, it will be nothing more than a response for reward. And it will be nothing more than a response out of fear of retribution of God. But God does not love us that way. God loves us so that we can learn to trust him even in the silence of the seasons of waiting. That we endure to the end. That we trust him all the way uh, to the final day, whether it be by breath or by rapture. I don't want to serve God today because of rules. I'm going to serve him because of trust that I trust him. It's not to say that rules of our life are not necessary and needful because they they become the guardrails of our life. They help guide us to where we need to be. They allow, they become the insulators of our life, if you would, that help us to remain, help us to remain in, in that avenue of grace, for lack of a better term. But at the same time, I trust God that he is working all things together for my good and thereby I love him. And I serve him out of a relationship with love. We struggle with the waiting in our world. Um, We are seasoned to not sit still. Huh? Let me preach for an hour and I'll prove that. We're seasoned to not sit still. We can't, we just can't handle it. We, We don't know what to do with ourselves if we have to sit still. And unfortunately so, it leaches our way into our spiritual life making us doubt and feel defeated, causing us to think we have missed the mark and make us make moves that take us out of his plan because we don't know how to sit still. It's the nature within us all. We want the sentence, in other words, we've seen it there in, in Ecclesiastes. We want the sentence to be executed speedily. We want the answer to be given quickly. We want the answer now, the pain to go away, the problem to be resolved, the the prayer to be answered, to get the job, to get the healing, to get the money, to get whatever it is that we're wanting at that particular moment. That is who we are, every one of us. Man in the pulpit, everybody in the pew, that's everybody in this place. We struggle with the waiting. We want to gratify our flesh. We want the habit in our our lives to to be the thing that satisfies the the itch uh, that we have, and, and we don't want to wait. When all the while the will of God is being done in our waiting, The waiting is a necessary part of the will of God. I need everybody to hear this. Young man, the necessary part of the will of God being done in your life, it is in the waiting. Amen. The perfect plan is being formed in the silence of of the season that we are in. For waiting and trust. My, I feel this in the Holy Ghost. I hope you're hearing this today. For waiting and trust are not meant to be passive. They they are not dead, dormant, lifeless days that string together like weak leaks in a chain that that has us bound. Look at this. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together unto now. And not they only, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of the body. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope, for what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. We wait for the adoption. We wait for the redemption of this corruptible body. We are saved. We are saved by that hope that the waiting produces. Hope is the, it is the, it is, it, it's the product of, of waiting. By, by waiting, I, am learned to, I learned to hope. 
And, and, and understand this now. We groan. We groan with, with creation. Uh, the clay, the clay, the clay that, that we are groans with the clay that we came from. Do you get this in the word? Uh, with creation. We groan with creation. Why? Because the clay that we are groans with the clay that we came from. We were formed from the very thing, the creation of God that, that calls out, Oh God. Oh God, the redemption of this corruptible. Oh God. That day of the Lord, that answer of the Lord. Amen. Amen. It looks and longs to be again in the hands of the one who formed it. Do you get that? The clay wants to be back in the hands of the one who formed it. You and I, the one wants, we want to be back. Mm. Am I the only one getting this right now? Come on. The clay wants to be back in the hands of the one that formed it. Yet yeah, in his hands again. Uh, so, that, so we wait in hope. And because we have that hope, it saves us. I am saved by hope. I talked to you, I, or I mentioned it here just about three Sundays ago. We are prisoners of hope, the, the minor prophet said. We are prisoners of hope. We are held by hope. We are incarcerated until that day, amen, that the redemption of the body takes place. Somebody just pray with me right now. God, I love you. And I pray, help me, Lord, to, to preach this and help us to receive this. Help somebody, Lord, that's struggling and the waiting right now to hear the rest of this. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, don't underestimate the value of hope in your life. It enables you to live on when, 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 when the light gets low. Um, when difficult days line up one against another, hope, hope makes us wait on. We wait on. We wait on. We wait on. Amen. There's nothing passive about waiting, trusting, hoping. We are saved by it. It keeps us alive. It keeps us trusting in the space of grace that he has given to us the season we are in. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. The due season. The due season is defined by our willingness to wait, to, to not be weary in the well-doing. We are defined by the due seasons of our life, the necessary season, in other words, the places that God allows us to be, the places that he puts us so that we can ultimately understand that it is goodness of God that is at work in us, that is forming something in us that we cannot comprehend right now. What we cannot see and what we do not know in God is often beneath the soil of the season that we are in, but it does not mean that we are dead. Just because we do not see it, it does not mean that we are dead or that God is finished with us. Yet we simply must trust the due season. Oh, how difficult the due seasons of our life are sometimes. That we don't understand why we have to go through that, why we have to feel that, why we have to experience that. But understand, brother buddy, sometimes it is the necessary thing that is in my life that keeps me saved for the ultimate production of the Spirit of God doing something in me that is greater than what I am in at the present. Amen, because the present is not where I'm meant to be ultimately. I'm meant to be further down the line. But if I don't endure the due season right now, I cannot be that then. Anybody hearing me right now? Oh, everybody, David struggled with it. We all struggle. Come on, I just want to read these verses real quickly here. Uh, my soul is sore vexed, but thou, oh Lord, how long? Everybody say, how long? Look at the next one. How long, how long, how long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, for, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Look at the next one. Lord, how long, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? How long shall they utter and speak hard things and all the workers of iniquity boast themselves? How long, Lord? How long do I have to feel this way? How long? How long? How long? When are you going to answer? When is it going to be different? When is the pain going to go away? When is the problem going to be settled? When is the answer to the prayer going to be there? How long, Lord? How long? If David struggled with it, then you and I are going to struggle with it. Uh, and I, that was only about four or five verses I read. You go back to the whole book of Psalms and you're going to find it. Almost every, ver every chapter is... It's just peppered with, oh God, where are you at? Oh God, how long? How long do I have to feel this way? But it came to pass. <laughs> Here is the hope. But it came to pass after many days. There is always, somebody hear me on my right side. There is always an answer in God. There is always a provision to the promise. Uh, Elijah, there is the sound of abundance of rain. Come on, your hearing may not be very good spiritually right now, but let me just tell somebody, 
It's going to rain. It's there. Hang on. You've been praying that prayer for years. Pray one more day. Pray one more year. Pray another season until finally the answer, because there's rain. There's the sound of an abundance of rain. David found his answer, and so must you and I. I waited patiently for the Lord. Come on, we sing. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. Come on, it ought to, it'll be an anthem of your soul today. And hmm, anybody? Victory, victory shall be mine. Oh, victory, victory shall be mine. Yes, oh, if I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battles. If I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battles. Victory, victory shall be mine. Come on, don't be weary in well-doing. Wait patiently for the Lord. We sang it a moment ago. I, would, I thought I was going to perish unless I had seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Come on, you're not done yet. God is not finished with you yet. It is not over. You've got to wait on God. Wait patiently on the Lord. He hears your cry. He inclines his ear unto you. Amen. This message today, it's, it's not to tell you that it is easy, but it is to tell you that it is needful. For God is more concerned about our salvation than he is about our comfort. For it's only through the patience and process of, of trusting, musicians if you would please, of trusting him that we are strengthened. It's only through the patience and the process of the trusting that we are strengthened and positioned for his will to be done in and through us. I'm almost done. But they that wait, but they that wait upon the Lord, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. But they that wait upon the Lord, not they that get their answer from the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord they that wait, they that endure, they that hope, they that believe, they that fear, they that are faithful, they that trust him in the waiting. The wait is not meant to weaken you. It's meant to be a means of his will being formed in and through you to strengthen you and to show himself strong through you. That's what the waiting's about. That's what the silence is. Because we never know, we never know what the voice of God is unless we first know what the silence of God is. We really never know what the voice of God sounds like if we're constantly listening to everything else in our life. We never know how to tease out and articulate when it's God or when it's just my flesh. Or when it's, when it's just another voice in the, in, the, in the sea of voices that's in this world. We, unless, I, unless I experience silence, unless I experience the weight, then I, then I really don't know the provision of God. And we often pray, oh, God, give us a revival. And we should pray that. God, give us a revival. God, give us healings. Well, let me tell you something. If God's going to give us revival, that means there's, needs, there's something we've got to change. If we're praying, oh, God, move, then we need something to be moved in our life. If, if we're praying, oh, God, let there be signs, miracles, and wonders, and healings, that means there's got to be sickness. And that means there's got to be difficulties. And that means there's got to be something for God to work with. And there's nothing wrong with praying that prayer. As a matter of fact, we should. But at the same time that we, have, we pray that prayer, we have to be willing to be the vehicles by which God decides that's how I'm going to work. I'm going to work through you. Come on. The opposition that you, everybody hear me right now as I close. The opposition that you have felt in your life, it very well could have been God's means of saving you. It very well could have been God's way of taking you to the brook where you needed to drink from so that you could just wait on him to save you from what was to what is. God's not done yet. Your life's not over. Your hope's not gone. It's not too late. He's still saving. He still knows you by name. So trust him. Be saved. Your answer will be revealed in the waiting. Amen. Father, I pray right now. Come on, everybody pray with me. As we stand to our feet and we begin to make our way to this altar. Father, I pray in your name, Jesus, that you would help somebody that is struggling in the days of their life right now and wondering when and have prayed the prayer, God, and it has not yet been answered, but 
God help them to know that the answer is, it, while it may be delayed, it is not denied today. So God, I pray for everybody in the sound of my voice that you would touch and minister to their mind, minister to their life, minister to their home, their family, their marriage, everything round about them, God, that they would know, Lord, that you are a God very present in the waiting of our life, that though it might seem like these difficult days will defeat us, God, help us to remember that we are not defeated, that we, we are victors. We are more than conquerors through you who loves us, Jesus. So I pray, Lord, in your name right now, God, I pray that you would touch us, Lord, and touch our minds. Come on. If you need to repent of your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, come on, why don't you make your way to this altar and, and find something in God today you can't live without, that can't, can't be saved without, that, that you need him. You, you need to know him. And you need to live for him. And he's got you this far. He's not going to abandon you now. He's not going to leave you. He's faithful in Jesus' name. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, that you're a God that is very present, very present. Thank you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, I love you, Lord. I trust you, God. I serve you not for rules, but I serve you because I love you, because I trust you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Uh, I love the Lord. Uh, I'm thankful I can seek you today and that you will be found. I love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Deal with us, deal with us, deal with us, God. Thank you, God. You order our steps. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 